the, the polling suggests that the vast majority of people of all races and classes yeah. mm. hate political correctness yeah. and wokeness. Exactly. So. Which I, I think that's a really important revelation that we've had this year because wokeness is effectively a new form of aristocracy. I mean, it's about having the right mannerisms, the right speech, the right language. It's a very bubbled way of thinking about the world. It's a very eccentric way of thinking about the world. It doesn't connect with ordinary people's experiences or views at all. It is, it, you know, it's the neo aristocracy of, of, of woke correctness. And that's why it grates so explicitly against ordinary people who are always presumed to be racist and transphobic and wrong-headed and and incorrect and ver everything else because it is this it's it's an incredibly elitist endeavor has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with left-wing politics mm. and nothing to do with progressive politics at all i thought one of the fascinating things about wokeness this year is is that it just became incredibly clear that uh, as ella was pointing out with her example that it's an unwinnable game and if you try and play the woke game you will lose right you will you know any especially if you're white and male if you try and be woke you'll just be exposed as white and male i mean there's no there's no <laughs> winning it's an unwinnable game the only solution to it is to call it out as an incredibly divisive racialized censorious and obsessive way of viewing the world and it has deadly consequences. It has really serious consequences. You know, the year is ending with someone being sacked from their job, Maya Forstater, mm. who has been thrown out of her work she was doing for a charity because she thinks there are two sexes and one sex can't change into the other sex. Mm. And the employment tribunal ruling against her makes it very clear that it is legitimate to sack people on the basis that they believe there are two sexes. And in fact, it goes further and says that views like that are unworthy of respect in a democratic society. So we now have judges decreeing what is worthy of respect and what is unworthy of respect in terms of speech and opinion. Uh, that's the end point of woke politics. And I think that's really when you have to get serious about pushing back, you know, not because of all the crazy cranky stuff that happens on Twitter. That's very annoying, but it's not that serious. But when you have judges or institutions or laws or the police saying, you can't say that, then you know that there is a real job to be done in terms of defending freedom of conscience and freedom of speech. Can't you see it too? There is an elephant in the room.